uh, today we are going to discuss about a very important topic which is on uh, what is a blockchain okay you must have heard about the term blockchain a lot recently um if you haven't heard about it uh, you'll definitely hear about it in future but it has been there since uh, uh, since quite long in more than 10 years when um, uh, the bitcoin uh, came into existence and people talked uh, about the bitcoin uh, so that is where you know the blockchain the terminology also came in so let's discuss about what is blockchain so that a lot of people do not understand uh, you know even i also for a long duration of time i did not understand what is blockchain until i started to started to understand and started to read and uh, started to discuss with people. So just wanted to simplify the entire concept of blockchain. So let me just share my screen so that uh, you understand the concept of blockchain. Okay, so what is blockchain then? Okay, so blockchain is a system of recording information. Okay, so those things, uh, you know, the lines uh, or the, the words which are highlighted, I just wanted to emphasize that so that you understand what is, uh, you know, what is it. So it's a system of recording information. So what is blockchain then? So it's a system of recording information. So what does that mean? So let me let me just explain a you uh, or give you a bit of a background so that you understand, you know, what is what is blockchain. Okay. So now here we are talking about recording information. Okay. Now we are in the information age, information era. So recording information. Okay. Um, you know, is what the blockchain is all about. That makes it difficult or impossible to change or hack or cheat the system, okay? So now, again, when we are talking about recording the information, then it, uh, the next, uh, you know, line, if you read, it talks about essentially a digital ledger. So we are recording the information. Where do we record them? Okay, so recording of the information usually done, uh, used to be done in a ledger. Okay, what is a ledger? Now you can see, you know, the, the picture, okay? It's, it's kind of a book where, you know, you must have seen if you are kind of, uh, you know, uh, as old as uh, myself, you must have seen, you know, the uh, ledger, okay? So ledgers, you know, like, uh, you know, this is a paper kind of a book or a notebook where, uh, you know, that would be, um, the, the it's a ruled kind of a book where uh, there will be different columns where you uh, you know record uh, different transactions. Okay, uh, whatever is happening because you you have to uh, you know you want to let's say you are into a business you want to record okay how much I sold today. So people usually record it or they used to record or you know still they record it. But the system has uh, moved on. So that means system of recording uh, once upon a time used to be uh you know in a in a ledger okay on a, a piece of paper then a ledger or a book okay they are used to write so now we have moved on now a computer came and that's where you record everything onto a computer and that is that is digital recording now blockchain is essential digital ledger okay so that means you will be uh you know uh, saving your information, okay, uh, the information is uh, stored in a digital ledger, okay, of transaction that is dupli uh, that is duplicated and distributed across the entire network or computer systems, okay. So let me then explain you, okay, the example which I gave you of a shop, okay, if you own a shop, small little shop, and you were before, okay, so you used to, or you still, uh, you know, record your transactions, on a, a um, on a ledger or you know piece of paper or a ledger still i think it's available you can buy the ledgers as well so you enter or you record it on debits and credits uh, you know um, so this is kind of a, if you see this is how you record it. so how much was the opening and uh, how much uh, you receive something or how you it goes out you credit it and then the net balance is what what you are recording so that is also in an accounting terminology it used to be called uh, 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 journals so you're journalizing things and then after you journalizing uh, journalize uh, you know all your transactions then you have to put it in in a ledger okay ledgers are usually different uh, different accounts so you know uh, the the transaction of a uh, you know specific uh, account for example if you are banking transactions you record it that becomes your one ledger um let's say you buy things uh, you know 
um, specific those things becomes a one ledger. So that becomes a ledger. So that means first you journalize, so that's become a journal. And, you know, and they call it used to, you know, in accounting terminology, it's called journal entry as well. So you journalize in, and then from the journal entries and you post those, uh, you know, into different ledgers, okay? So now, then as we evolve, okay, now you understand in a bigger scheme of things, for example, um, let's uh, take the example of, uh, you know, you are not uh, isolated now, okay, you are doing a business, now you have money coming in, now you want to save that money somehow, okay, so that is another party involved here that's called a bank, because you wanted to, you know, keep that money safe, so you are, you are now utilizing uh, another, uh, another organization called bank here, and what they do, okay, what are banks anyway? So they are big ledger keepers, okay? They keep record of whatever you are relating to your account. They give you account number, it's just simply a number relating to that number, uh, you know, any transaction, that means any amount, uh, you know, just like they are all digits, uh, numbers uh, added to, uh, to your account, uh, okay? Some numbers, that means you say that, okay, I receive money, some numbers are deducted, and then you call it that, that is it, um, interpreted as, as the de deduction or going out of your account. Okay. So now you are relying on a third party. Okay. With somebody else. Okay. Your money. Okay. Your money is now with somebody else. That's, that's your bank. And what do they do? They are the big ledger keepers. They not only keep the ledger of your, um, you know, that's called your bank account. They have thousands and millions of other people. They keep the record of the, the transaction. What are the transactions? That's plus and minuses, okay? They are the ledger keepers. So now just imagine now, your bank is a centralized, so this, is, this becomes a centralized organization. You know, they keep the record of everything and then whatever you keep, now they have the money with them, okay? So that means your money is with them for them to play with so that means they can invest that money they can do whatever because you wanted to keep that money safe so that means the safety is what they are providing you okay however once the money is there with them now they invest it and they make a lot of money so the banks and financial institution they make a lot of money out of it okay so now if you understand these banks okay now what the issue is uh, you know uh, there is some some organization called central bank okay they are kind of uh, you know they keep the ledger of all different banks okay this is all centralized to a central bank one central bank under that central bank there are multiple banks and people like you and me our money is with the um different different banks okay so now with this hierarchical structure where there is one organization or central authority you know which uh, you know keep the record of everyone okay financial record of everything okay now this, uh, you know, uh, triggered or this uh, led to a lot of monopolization and centralization where, you know, all these banks or financial institutions were making a lot of money, okay? And they were the one who were controlling the supply of money in, in the economy, okay? Which may not be a good idea. So what is the solution or as the money evolved, just imagine, you know, from a you know, gold stand, a bartered economy to the gold standard to, you know, our currency came in, uh, you know, coins and notes. Then it became digital, like credit card, uh, 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 debit card transactions, you know, then becomes other uh, sophisticated transaction where you are touching, okay? So you are touching your phone, even you don't need to have a bank card, you know, touching your phone, your I know account uh, is deducted, you know, the money goes out from your account, okay? So why? Because money, if you understand, these are all kind of a record keeping or nothing else but record keeping. So when you scan, okay, with your, uh, you know, with your, uh, on your phone, you just touch when you are doing a transaction on at your, uh, any superstore, you are just touching it, okay? And then what is happening is a record is being kept, okay? That, that means that is money is simply record. Okay, that is what you have to be very clear in your mind now, that money is not the one which you are thinking like I have money means those, those uh, paper, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, I don't know, five, five inch or four, uh, five inch by two inch, uh, you know, paper, 
who what used to call as money is not really money that is a way it it was representing money okay but the money is uh, you know uh, something which is uh, kind of money coming in or going out it's nothing but uh, you know your record you know keeping a record of you know some some amount okay so now if you understand now moving on to um, to the world you know where where you have uh, you know uh, the central authorities okay so they are the one who have the tremendous power okay um, of uh, them creating okay uh, during this pandemic if you, if you have seen that a lot of a lot of uh, banks around the world so they pumped a lot of money into the economy what does that mean pumping money into the economy that means they created money okay what does that mean again let's let's simplify it okay so they created money how you create a money is uh, you know by uh, giving out uh, giving out loans okay so when the bank give out loan means they just added some zeros and some figures into the account of people uh, you know who um, who have the bank account you know they added some uh, you know zeros or some figures into that account and that is money is created out of thin air okay so now you understand that the the money when it's it's uh, it's created okay it's just like anything else when it's when it gets created it becomes abundantly you know, supplied and it is it's all over so the demand for it okay as the supply goes up okay that is the basics of economics the supply goes up what happens that the demand okay goes down okay so that means uh, you know that is no more scarce so that means that value of that money is lesser okay because the supply is more so that is the reason why what is called we call it inflation when you know the supply of money goes uh, high and uh, you know products so that means people have more money okay, in circulation but the products which are the real things you know which will be bought and sold that that is the same as it was before that means uh, that cannot be created out of thin air okay and that is when you see that uh, you know that same product same uh, you know pint of milk or same uh, apple what you have been buying before before two years and now the uh, the the fuel what you have been buying two years back one year back and now you'll see that the price has gone up okay and that is called inflation so now with this kind of a centralized uh, financial system uh, you know very few people okay or these very few organizations okay they were the one who are have control on the finances and they were able to decide uh, you know they want to create an inflation they could do that they want to pump money into the economy they used to do that okay they can do that so now the blockchain concept is when the record keeping okay is a no, now decentralized okay decentralized means what so there is no central bank okay so that, that that means there is no central bank which can create money out of thin thin air and uh, create uh, you know kind of uh, scarcity or abundant supply okay so so here comes the concept of blockchain where the no centralized organization or bank uh, banks are there financial institution are there and the record keeping so that means if they are not there because why financial institutions are there they were the record keepers so now the record keep keeping is now distributed now you see that digital nature of transaction that is duplicated and distributed across the entire network so that means that re record keeping is not done by by the central banks uh, you know or not record is not kept in the central banks server okay their databases that is distributed in a network what is a network internet internet is a network okay? biggest network so are a network that means there are computers or the servers or databases are integrated okay and this record is kept this ledger is kept you know in multiple different not one person that same is duplicated that means a copy of that same transactions is held not only in one system my computer it is all just imagine in your computer your friend's computer everyone as we are all connected in the internet it is saved in each and everyone's database okay now 
that is that is where you know that this is uh, you know the record keeping is now a digital record keeping there is no central authority a, a digital record keeping where the record is kept you know across uh, different systems okay and this is in a way uh, this is also termed as a mining who are these people where the records are kept uh, these are the miners okay now uh, you know, mining, uh, you must have uh, used that word mining before in, um, you know, in the case of gold mining or coal mining and all those things. Now you, you are using that same thing, you know, terminology in case of money or financial transaction that is called mining as well. Okay, so the miners are the people who keep the record, okay, um, of these transactions in their own system. Who can be a miner? You can be a miner as well. Question is, why should I mine it? Okay, because I will be utilizing my internet because I have my internet has to be connected always, and I need to have you know the the server uh, space as well so that you know I I can I can uh, keep these records okay and validate these records uh, okay uh, validation means because the same record is kept in multiple different systems so that has to be it has to be synced with all this copy you know just imagine you have a copy you record it you know on your, on your piece of paper and i am also recording it in my ledger in my um, my notebook and thousands of other people are recording in their own notebooks okay so that means there are so many my uh, so many miners or so many ledgers are being kept and every every record has to be updated and that is what you know the blockchain technology has enabled that you know record keeping or ledger is uh, now distributed okay okay not in with one person but you can uh, keep the record of it wow well, now you must be thinking okay financial record do i have every so that means i can see i can have the record of how much of money this guy is depositing or this guy has or this guy is trading not really so what does that mean so that means all these transactions are encrypted okay that is where the cryptology or cryptography came in okay cryptography okay that means this is encrypted now you must have heard about encryption and decryption okay encryption is the process of uh, you know the raw data so that means if you uh, deposit hundred dollars or you gave hundred dollars to someone the raw data is hundred dollar is deducted okay from your account so that is raw data but that gets converted you know by cryptography okay um uh, and uh, you know and then converted it to what okay we'll, we call it a hashing technology we'll talk about that hashing technology okay which is embedded into this blockchain okay blockchain means all these transactions are recorded okay is uh, compiled or it's um, you know it's put together you know compilation is also a different meaning in computer world so that's why i don't want to use that word compile but what i'm saying is it is recorded okay it's it's uh, put together okay and it becomes a block okay so one block okay so let's let's go through it and let's, and let's understand how it how it works okay so let's go back to that history and let's understand okay now blockchain is uh, it's a bit old you know blockchain the concept is a bit old but it again you know it came in you know 1970s when the blockchain the technology itself was was invented but satoshi nakamoto okay whose name you will find you know it is associated with bitcoin okay he's is japanese uh, you know um, uh, cryptographer okay and uh, you know um, he he is the one you know he was uh, cryptology was studying this cryptology is, is uh, you know well and a lot lot of people also because there is no physical kind of you know this is kind of a picture floating around in the internet but uh, nobody nobody knows or you know you can't just uh, talk to satoshi because they say that this is a name given it may not be the right name nobody knows exactly you know how it came into existence uh, you know the the bitcoin but uh, let me just give you that perspective that the blockchain as you see it now as we are discussing now that was kind of a you know um the concept uh, was brought into existence initially that concept was studied and proposed in 1970s but uh, 
Satoshi Nakamoto is the one whose name is associated with blockchain in recent days when Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency invented, uh, you know, or um, made available to the whole world, okay, as a, as, a, as a cryptocurrency. So that means you understand now, why is it called cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency is where there is a cryptography is involved, that is a, a, a encoding, okay, or a decoding, uh, you know, uh, you know, encoding and decoding is involved. Okay, this is cryptography. Okay, so now let's understand how does that blockchain works then. Okay, so transactions. Okay, one or multiple. Usually, there are multiple transactions are made in a block. This is called a block. Okay, so what you know, so they are put together. Okay, and then a hash. Uh, you know, hash is generated. Okay, so let me explain you what is an mm. hash. Okay, so you understand. So all these transactions now has to uh, transaction is put together. Okay, and it is uh, it is uh, you know uh, collated as as a tree. Okay, with one block will have one hash code. Okay. So that means a code which is representation of multiple transactions and that becomes one block okay so there are multiple blocks so that means once this block is uh, you know uh, once the block is uh, formed okay then the next block is generated so that means uh, you know bunch of transactions are recorded in one ledger you can say one block is one ledger okay and but that ledger nobody can go open it open the um, uh, you know, well, this ledger is open, but nobody can change the ledger. Okay, so that is extremely important. That means this is open. You can go and check it. Uh, you know, um, in a, a, you know, in Ethereum network, we discuss about that. But uh, this is available to everyone, public. Okay, publicly available. But whose data is this? Okay, is a not something you will be ev ever able to see that. Okay, that means. Uh, you know, it is uh, John Smith's, uh, you know, um, uh, transactions is nobody is able to know that. Why? Because in this cryptology, cryptography world or a world of blockchain, everyone uh, identity is, uh, you know, is kept secret. Okay. So that means you are not your physical face, but you are just a number. Okay. Or a byte. Okay. So you are just a number, which uh, you know that number. Okay, what is a number? Okay, we'll uh, I'll show you that. Uh, you know, um, so you will have a that's called a digital wallet. Okay, so that wallet. Okay, has has a specific uh, specific alphanumeric number, and that is what is represented. That wallet is the transaction, and whose wallet is that? If that wallet could be your, could be mine. As uh, if I get the passcode of your wallet. Then that is where you see that a lot of uh, you know um, scams and uh, you know a lot of money has been stolen as well from the accounts of people uh, you, know, uh, you know that account account is compromised. Okay, so you have to be very careful as well. That but that that a digital wallet is the identity and anyone can have that if they have you know access or they know somebody knows the your passcode. Okay, so let me just tell you then. This blocks are formed, or the, every transactions are recorded in a block, okay, and then this block is formed in such a way, okay, that okay different blocks they are chained together, okay. Now you can see the chain; they are chained together. That means block two. Now you see that has this hash, you know, and this hash. Okay, do you see that? This is the chain. So what does that mean? That is a link between hash block one and block two, okay, with this hash. And ha block two, okay, has a link with block three with another hash, okay? So this is, so that means every block has a reference of the hash before, okay? Hash is nothing but a cryptographic representation of that block, okay? Or that group of transactions, okay? You understand that means in in one book if you have recorded 100 transactions okay and you name that book 2022 so that is kind of a, it can become a one block okay so now you must be wondering okay then what happens to where it has to start somewhere because you say that okay every block has a reference of the uh, block or before okay then 
you know where does it start okay is that a block zero okay or block one okay when it starts yes so there is a hash now you can say the previous hash is zero you see that block one so that is called genesis block the genesis block you know in any blockchain okay is the first or zero okay or not zero but i, I would say that it is one okay this is where the blockchain starts okay there that block has a reference zero that means you know that is where it's called genesis block the start of the blockchain okay then it keeps multiplying but why is it a chain okay that is what the revolutionary concept is guys you have to understand because why is it a chain because uh, you know to keep the integrity of data inside so that it is immutable what is immutable it cannot be changed okay the data in every block is immutable it can't be changed and that is the reason why you will find that every uh, block has a chain link to it so uh, you know and the chain itself makes it uh, unchangeable what does that mean so that means as you know every block okay if you want to change okay the block okay there are two things which will stop you to change any transaction so that is where it becomes a tamper proof or you know it becomes uh, uh, it's a it's a safe that means you know this is cannot be tampered okay uh, that that cannot be even eliminated or deleted why okay why cannot be tampered why it cannot be deleted is because this is not centralized so that means i can delete the data if i am a miner i have a record of this transaction this block two data is with me i can delete it but there are another thousands of miners all around the world they have the copy of the block 2 as well okay so block 2 will still exist in other people system even though i try to delete it okay so so that is what does that mean this is a distributed okay network or it is a copy exists in multiple uh, different people's uh, you know systems okay so that is uh, that is super powerful and the other thing is the chain itself okay one is distributed network what makes it secure okay it's, it's not changeable second thing is the chain what does that mean so that means if you change anything okay in a in a in a blockchain okay because this source of the technology of hash okay the hash is a cryptographic uh, representation of a number let me just see you this is how kind of a first the bitcoin genesis block uh, it was written okay that is block the first is you know number one block okay that is where it started okay the bitcoin okay this is the first blockchain as as you, you as you know okay this is where it started this is a raw hex version okay so this is a hexagonal you know like uh, hex is uh, you know kind of another kind of representation of uh, you know cryptographic representation okay there are different formats uh, you know you can be uh, it can be written so that now you see that okay there is a chain here okay that means the this hex uh, you know the hash value so this is the hash value as you can see okay so this hash value will be changed if i want to change any any information in there any small change as well it will change the entire uh, you know sort of uh, value okay how does that look like okay we'll talk uh, you know we'll share it with you in in a in a page uh, you know on the next next slide but let let's understand the hash then okay hash is a digital fingerprint that is generated from the data content within a block using cryptography okay so every block into the hash of the previous block we discussed about that so this is how a hash value looks like guys okay so there are different functions okay uh, different hash functions okay that means you say hash function means different ways or different technologies is used to generate these hashes okay now we use sha2 hashing technology okay sha2 is wild practice but sha256 just a name hello okay in uh, you know hello in uh, italics no hello i think only <laughs> hello you see that sh 256 only that name itself okay, just for an example so i'm not talking about a transaction i'm talking about a value i'm talking about let's say you are messaging someone hello okay it is going through uh, you know a secure network and if it is converted the data get encrypted and this is how it looks like with sh 256 you see that this weird long number with uh, alphabet 
you know, and uh, it has got so many numbers in alphabet. Okay, does it mean anything to you? This H E L L O represents such a big one. Okay, it is a double hashing, and uh, in S H A one function. Okay, that means these are different different ways of representation of uh, you know uh, cryptography. So here it is another random number. Doesn't make any sense to you. Okay, does it? So. So this is where we call it uh, the cryptography or that is where the cryptocurrency came in, okay, because they use this uh, blockchain technology. Now they see that these numbers, okay, these are called, you, know, you see this, this is, this is that hash, okay. So this hash is connected with this, okay. So that means, so this hash has, you know, sorry, this block has a reference of the previous block. And this block has a reference of the previous block. That is, these are nothing but the hash. Representation of hash is linked. S is linked, and that is where it is called a blockchain, or this is connected through this hash with the chain. Okay, chain together. Now, how the hash is generated? Okay, this is hash is generated. Okay, just to give you a very high level so that you understand the concept quite broadly and clearly as well. It should not be uh, just a cloudy, uh, you know, muddy thing in your mind that okay, what the hell is blockchain? It is. If you try to understand it, it's a simple concept as well. If you think it's simple, it is. To be honest, okay. So what is representation? So let's take an example. This starts here. Transaction A. I give you some money. I give you a dollar. Okay, that's that one transaction. This person uh, uh, wallet number this uh, you know uh, is deducted one dollar, and that's it, wallet number two uh, will be included. You know, um, it will be added one dollar. Okay, wallet, or you can say the bank account, whatever that is. Transaction. These are not transactions. Okay, so the transaction A, B, C, D. Okay, there are four transactions in these examples. What happens here? Is uh, all this transaction has put together, okay? Then hash A and hash B. So that means transaction is converted into hash, okay? So now with this technology, as you can see, that different function they call it fun functions, okay? Different methods or methodology of converting, okay? So that becomes you know hashes, hash A, hash B. Now again, that hash A and hash B or all transaction are converted into hashes like these, these kind of a values, and then again. This value and this value, hash A and hash B, okay? These values, these two values combine again together to become hash AB. So that means this is all connected and creates another hash value. And from this side as well, another hash value. And then again, it gets combined together has AB and hash CD uh, get connected again. It becomes, uh, you know, the root, just one hash is created, okay? And one hash means one, this kind of alphanumeric number is created, which represents that has, it has a representation of all the transactions, all A, B, C, D, all four transactions is represented in one hash. So this is called a Markle tree, okay? Markle tree, Professor Ralph Markle in 1979, as we discussed earlier, blockchain concept is not a new thing, okay? It has been there in 1979, it was patented, in 1979, but it is coming into existence and practice and becoming popular now with uh, Nakamoto, uh, you know, with a Bitcoin, it is becoming popular and it is coming as a, you know, mainstream, uh, you know, um, uh, technology uh, for decentralization, okay, online decentralization, okay. So now you said it is, it, it uh, creates a root hash or a Markle root, they say, okay, this is a tree. Okay, this is, these are all leaves, the branches, the root. So this is the root, okay, root is just one root, you know, branches and then branch has trees, uh, by branch has leaves. So now this is what the Ralph uh, uh, Markle's, uh, Markle tree, which creates one hash and that is what one hash is what connects, okay? Okay, one hash, the one block, you know, that hash created, okay, that will be referenced in the next block. Okay, now do you understand that? Okay, and the next block. So everyone will have uh, the reference of the block before, all right, okay. So now you understand that if you want to change one block, the hash itself value changes and, and that, the, uh, you know, that changes the entire equation. Why? Because one hash value changes, okay. 
but you know the system will not allow that to change because it is connected to another uh, block in the blockchain you know the chain net, uh, network you know so then it that will be a mismatch so the all the values have to be changed now okay now if you are able to change with uh, supercomputer you are a miner you you have a supercomputer you want to change the entire all the uh, blocks in the chain blockchain still uh, it will not happen. Why? Because you changed your system. There are thousands of other systems out there, the same value, same transactions, and same hash, um, hash value is recorded. It cannot, you cannot get, go and change all the values in all the systems all around the world. Okay. And that is where you understand that it is deeply impossible. Now, let's understand the okay so let's understand now the uh, or let's uh, you know discuss about uh, okay now let's discuss about how this blockchain is uh, you know used to decentralize uh, to uh, to decentralize the entire financial uh, institutions okay all around the world okay now currency is a major part of finances okay um that means that is a medium through which you know the the financing happens okay that's definitely cryptocurrency you know or uh, uh, bitcoin is uh, the one which has revolutionized you know the entire thing now you have ethereum now we have so many different uh, coins and uh, you know uh, tokens as well okay what is a coin and a token we'll discuss about that in another another video but uh, you know there are so many of them but with uh, with the money being digitalized as decentralized now that has triggered a lot of other functions of any financial institutions okay or or finance model if you see okay what is financing okay the money what this financial institution have or uh, you know um, once the uh, once a bank has uh, the money okay what do they do so they do quite a lot of other things as well. Okay, what do they do? They first, they lend it to other people. So that means borrowing and lending is one. So that means saving is one part of it. And them lending the money out with interest is another part of a financial institutions or, you know, duties, what they used to do or they're still doing it. Okay. And then, uh, you know, about, you know, these, these interest uh, calculation and then investment as well. Okay. Now you are lending the money, okay? Investment as well is lending is one kind of an investment, okay? But lending you can uh, you can lend it to individuals, or you can lend it to companies or institutions as well, and that is where we call it an investment. Uh, you know, in stocks and shares, you know, they uh, get uh, the return as well, okay? So that means if they give individuals the loan, they get the interest on the loans, but they, if they invest, okay? in all these companies, uh, you know, um, the, again, two forms, uh, you know, the, the money is given, one is the loan to company, another is investment where you buy the stocks and shares and, you know, these financial institution become the shareholder of the companies, okay? So that is one, one functionality as well. Banking, okay, this is, this is the banking's, uh, bank's work anyway. Then insurance, okay, insurance is uh, where, you know, it's a pool of money, okay, they collect money from different people and, um, and then they provide, uh, you know, the security, okay, um, uh, to uh, based on the money what the pool uh, creates, okay. So that is also so all these functionality of investment, uh, you know, um, you know, lending and borrowing and uh, you know, um, even trading, okay, the financial institutions, you know, they were involved uh, in 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 the trading as well, okay, buying and selling, you know, actively is is is, is trading, okay. And all these uh, functions are now uh, going to be done in this decentralized finance. They call it DeFi. We'll discuss about it in another video as well. What is decentralized finance in detail and how is this revolutionizing the entire finance world and what is going to, it is going to change the entire kind of a future of, of financing all around, okay? so. Um, you know, hope it made sense to you. You understand the cryptography or the blockchain technology, which which involves the cryptography, okay, and how the entire dynamics of this new era 
of decentralized finance is kind of a, it is taking wo the world by storm, I would say, you know, it's uh, billions of dollars of, uh, you know, investment is, uh, you know, um, uh, being injected in this, uh, this uh, new world, okay? So, hope it made sense to you. Uh, you know, if you want to learn more about, uh, you know, um, you know, blockchain or decentralized finance and how this world is evolving, you know, you can uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we do a lot of, uh, you know, these kind of uh, videos. Check out my YouTube channel as well to see and learn, uh, you know, all the basics of, uh, you know, uh, cryptocurrency, decentralized finance and NFTs and exciting world of uh, digital web three okay so with that i am done and over and out guys bye bye